The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Uh, good morning, everybody, and welcome. Uh, a very big welcome to you to, uh, to this uh, Using G Cloud 13 with your public sector strategy. My name's Chris Farthing. I am the founder and CEO of Advice Cloud. Uh, and again, I'm delighted to welcome you here on this one. Uh, it's uh, the first public webinar I ever did was uh, for, for G Cloud 7. Um, so it's quite a few years ago now, and it's a bit bonkers that we're at now version 13. Uh, uh, well, as soon as it comes to market, obviously, we're all delighted to, to, to be in this position. Um, before, a quick second beforehand, just to let you know that this, this webinar is going to be from a ground up review. So it's mainly aimed at people that are new to the framework, but there'll still be, um, uh, there'll still be information for those from old hands like myself. Who, I've been on the framework since version three, I think, I've got the news since version one. Anyway, a quick bit of housekeeping before we crack on. Um, you'll note that everybody is muted. Um, there is an ability, please do ask questions. We try to make this interactive. There is, there'll be some polls throughout this to give us, so you can give us some opinions and let us know um, how you feel about things. Uh, but use the question and answer section of the uh, question section section on your, um, on your sidebar that will enable you to ask questions. And we have a, pack, we have a section at the end for, um, for Q&A and any that we can't answer um, we will um, do our best to uh, to answer those, and we'll send that around with the recording. This obviously this, this is being recorded. We we'll send the we we'll send it around with a copy of the recording, the slides, and all of the Q and A um, that we can get done. Hopefully this afternoon, but possibly tomorrow. All right. So uh, without further ado, I will then crack on. So in terms of agenda, we'll do a quick round of introductions to those of you who don't know who a vice cloud are. Then we'll crack into the meat of things around how G Cloud 13 works. What I found over the years of buying from G Cloud since version one, um, that the more informed suppliers are about how um, things work, the better and more wider diverse my supply chain is. I'm an ex-government buyer, um, having worked for places like DEFRA, um, for the Financial Conduct Authority, Met Police, and quite a large amount of local government. Um, and then we'll go into some stuff for what you need to do about once suppliers, what suppliers need to do once it goes live. We will then have even more top tips on um, making, you know, on making the most of your time on G Cloud. We we'll talk a little bit about how we can help because we do offer services. Clearly, this webinar is for free, but you know we are a paid for consultancy, um, as you'll find out. And then we're going to Q and A, and there'll be some polls to say, some interactive polls throughout this. So hopefully, you'll get, uh, we'll be able to share some information about what the market's feeling about things as well. So introductions about us: we are a bunch of public sector procurement specialists, I've outlined. We're also known as G Cloud and Framework Consultants, meaning that we help people get onto frameworks and understand how these frameworks work and provide suppliers with opportunities to actually accelerate their sales um, through better understanding of how public procurement works. We do work with buyers and suppliers on both sides, having had extensive buyer experience. And uh, since October 2014, we have very proudly over, helped for over 420 clients successfully across over 30 odd frameworks now. Um, with 704 services um, successfully listed on those frameworks, oh, in excess of a billion pounds have been uh, won by our clients as a direct result of our work, uh, and not just because they're on that framework. And uh, over 71% of our clients are SMEs, and, and as a purpose-led organisation, which we clearly are, uh, you know, our, our raison d'etre is all about trying to, to, to help SMEs in the main. We do work with some of the large organisations, um so, uh, to 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 access and to win government business that's 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 one of our stated aims is to help them and look that that helps on the economy and yeah of course we've got an, an, an average 90 percent of our average quality score across all the frameworks we've worked on which we're extremely happy and pleased to to, to get here's a quick brief some of our some of our private sector clients and he's been with us for a very long time you'll see a good mix of um, micro small and medium and some of the larger names in the business and quite a few of our public sector clients here, although we are missing um, a few of the, uh, uh, so Ministry of Housing, um, a bit, sorry, the Department uh, of uh, Leveling Up Housing Communities previously that it was um, an HCLG. So we've got a few other ones that we've got on there now as well. We're also lucky enough to, whilst we have a great internal team of um, really good procurement experts and framework and bid specialists, um, you can always tell a, a, an organisation by the company I keep, and we have some, some good ex-public sector or, or well-known people within the public sector, be luminaries that work with us. Um, you can see people here, ex-CIOs, ex-Deputy Constables, ex-Chief Officers from um, GDS, CCS, CCS G Cloud Leads, um, and, uh, uh, and some great bid specialists and also government technology strategists as well. 
uh, and sales experts. So, you know, as well as our partners, Tech UK, Social Value Business, Stottles, and we are a proud member of APMP as well, those management people. So, uh, you know, we, we've got some really good partners and some and great credentials there for, for if you're looking to work with people like us. So we're going to have a quick poll. My colleague Danny uh, runs the polls and we'll do the Q&A as well. So Danny, could you please run the first poll that we have? And this is, are you currently listed on Gcloud 12? You could select one of the following answers. Yes, we've been on many iterations. Yes, but it was new for us. No, we're on and waiting for Gcloud 13 though. And no, we're not on Gcloud 12 or 13. Sorry, no, we're not on and waiting for it. So yeah, if you could please, um, Give yourself about, uh, we'll give you about a minute to get those in there, Danny. Uh, if you could close the poll in about a minute's time, that would be great. Let's show us the results. Okay, give me about another 10, 10 or 15 seconds, and we'll see where we get to. Yeah, I think we're almost there. Hang on. Yeah, I think that's us now. So um, if you want to publish that, please, Danny, that'd be great. Show the results. Okay, so what we've got here. So it's a good mix. We've got 40% of you on many different iterations. 26% saying, yes, it's new for you. And then 35% uh, um, are either not on uh, G Cloud 12 or 13 or are waiting for 13 to come on. So it's a really good mix. So I think hopefully this will be aimed at the right people and you'll all get some information out of it, but uh, you know, there's good stuff we've got to share. So let's crack on. So let's talk about how GCal 13 works, shall we? So what is it, first of all? Well, RM1557, and those of you who wonder what the RM means, it just is a GCal, it's a crack of services file numbers, and it means root to market. So GCloud RM1557, it's a framework where um, supply-based cloud, uh, cloud solutions and services are made available through what's called a front-end catalog called the digital marketplace. Um, as far as I'm concerned, the GCloud framework is a good place to be, certainly for companies who are either thinking about selling the cloud-based solutions to the UK government or, or currently are. Um, and you know, as for a basic housekeeping for those that are new, the framework is divided into, into, into what's lots or buckets for services. Okay, and GCloud has 13 now has four lots. Um, lot one is for cloud hosting, which used to be infrastructure service and platform as a service. And that is in the main for um, for compute and storage, but there's also things around networking and security provision uh, and, and things like that in there as well. But mainly it's around deploy, manage and run software and the provision and use processing storage or networking sources, okay? So things like, you know, um, yeah, compute and storage, uh, your, your AWS instances, your Azure instances, your GCP, UK Cloud, whoever you've got as your um, as your preferred um, hosting provider, they'll either provide these services to them directly, or you can provide it on their behalf if you have a piece of agreement with them in lot one. Lot two is cloud software, um, also the software as a service. And again, this is for applica applications so that sit on top of the hosting and the platform elements accessed over a public private network and are hosted in the cloud. So the typical things, so it could be a HR system, it could be a finance system, it could be more, very popular these days, a data analytics, something to do with cybersecurity. Uh, you know, there, there's, there's a pro project and program management stuff. I mean, you know, I think at the last check, um, there's something like 38,000 services on vCloud from around 5,000 suppliers. So the catalog's busy and has a lot of stuff on there. But, um, second to last, we've got um, Block3 Cloud Support. This is for um, services that help um, buyers set up and maintain their cloud software hosting service. So if you think about, this is a consultancy or service-based wrap um, where people, you help buyers decide whether cloud's right for them, help them choose that cloud, help them migrate to that cloud, help them manage and secure that cloud and do funky stuff with the data or whatever it is you need to do. Um, help them then um, either assess whether that cloud's still right for them, maybe retire it, migrate it to a new service, or continue to carry on supporting. Okay, so that's in essence the, the whole cloud support element. And now, new for G Cloud 13 is what's called Lot 4, the further competition lot. Now, this is a very limited supplier numbers. All of the others, it, as many suppliers as they want, can, can list and register on each one of those lots. 
Whereas for GCLAN 13, um, CCS have introduced a further competition lock. So this is designed for larger, more complex requirements that are procured for a further competition only, whereas the other um, lots have the ability to direct award, which we'll talk about in a little bit more detail later on. So how it works, you know, suppliers of any base cloud solutions and services can apply and be on the thing. It says here that no hardware can be listed on the framework. However, um, if you have um, a service or a solution that a piece of hardware may be um, an integral part of, I'm thinking something, you know, if you're thinking like a health analytics um, service that you're running or solution you're running, a SaaS based thing that requires you to, a, a user to have a wearable, and as provided as part of that, then that's acceptable. Okay. Um, if you're looking to provide a, a router or a firewall or some PCs or something like that, that's not really what this is about. Okay. Um, it doesn't meet the, the NIST definitions. However, you will still find people trying, I think there are 42 listings currently, um, of which about 10 of them are directly trying to sell you Chromebooks, for example. And I've had a lot of debate over this over time whether this should be allowed personally. I think it's a bit of a stretch, but if people are offering them on an as-a-service basis, um, rather than saying here buy 20 Chromebooks off me on a capital basis, then I can see how people will get away with that. All right, so suppliers must agree to work in a way that helps buyers comply with the technology code of practice. Um, co-location services cannot be listed. Okay, so no co-location services can be listed, or you know, co-location is a no-no. That was taken out from G Cloud 5. I think, if I remember rightly, uh, and G Cloud itself is, is is for sorry, it's for off-the-shelf solutions. Sorry, I put it in not off-the-shelf solutions. I beg your pardon. I'm trying to read my slides here. If you offer bespoke software development, this really isn't the framework for you. That would be the digital outcomes framework. Okay, um, that was that was spun off. I mean, it, bespoke application development was taken off again. I think around G Cloud five or six. Um, and also, um, very clear, it's not for people offering recruitment services or staff resourcing. Again, there are other frameworks about digital specialists and programs, or you can do in the public sector resourcing, um, non-medical, non-clinical frameworks run by the um, London Procurement Partnership, I think it is. So, you know, they're very clear in the application that resourcing uh, is not allowed. And there have been actually a number of fines from HMRC that are have been uh, to departments who are doing auditing of certain departments um, and found them non-compliant and um, using G Cloud when uh, they should actually have been um, doing stuff that's inside our certified by a different framework. Uh, so there's been over 12 billion pounds spent through G Cloud. So it's an extremely successful framework. Okay. Um, and you know, with 64% of that going through support, 24% through software and 12% through hosting. 40% of that service goes to SMEs and just under 80% to, to, to central government. And it does keep growing. I know from, um, from knowing CCS and listening to their presentations that they're anticipating three billion pounds to go through this iteration, this, this financial year alone. So if you think they take 0.75% of that, um, that the, the, the framework is worth quite a lot for them. And I think they'd be a little bit mad to tinker with this too much more. So in terms of how it works from lots one to three, okay. So when buyers are faced with multiple, so first of all, a buyer will go to the digital marketplace and they will click on to search for a cloud solution. Okay, this is an open portal that anyone can access and they will type in, they will have done some pre-work and worked out the sort of keywords, the type of things they're looking to buy. Okay, they will then go onto the digital marketplace and type in some words onto there. So it might be CRM, or it might be ERP, it might be payroll, it might be HR solution. Uh, and then we use that plus some other filters that you have down the side to, to see get a, a, a credible list of suppliers who can actually um, meet their requirements. Okay, so once you've got that, you can then try to, to, to stream that down to a manageable number to evaluate. And there's two ways really you can make your decision as a buyer on this. All right. One is to actually choose the supplier that meets the needs, uh, meets your needs and has the lowest price. Or two, and the most likely to be used is the, what's called the most economically advantageous tender. And that's actually soon to be changed to the most advantageous tender in the nuclear payment regulations, by the way, process. Uh, and that is where you do a process of, of evaluating on uh, from your desk 
those um, those solutions that are coming up. Okay. However, if a buyer search produces either only one result or only one organization that fully meets their requirements, yeah, uh, and meets the pricing and delivery needs, then a buyer can what's called do a direct award to that company. It's also known as a single tender action uh, under the regulations. Okay. Um, and that's where GCO is very, very popular because, you know, if um, there is some quite unique stuff out there and there are some ways of using that in your search terms and, you know, making sure that buyers can find you compliantly and uh, as a direct, on a direct award basis. But, you know, with 38,000 um, 38, uh, listings on the digital marketplace, it can be quite a stretch to actually do that, get to know how to do that. So how do buyers find your listing? Okay, so there's some searchable parts of the digital marketplace called the service title, the service summary, and the features and benefits. So initially, as I said, you'll type in um, something on the digital marketplace to say, you know, CRM, HR system, whatever it was I was going to do. Use some, um, and that will come a list there, and you can then filter by the lot, by the types of categories of the um, services that you're offering, and use other various filter options, including the types of security of the staff that are involved. It could be the, whether you've got an ISO 27001, where your data is held, depending on the type of service you're asked for. Um, and, you know, you would have chosen a lot of these on application. And out of that, we'll come down to hopefully come down to a manageable number. And what can buyers evaluate? OK, they can be everything that you've submitted. OK, and this includes all of the information on your front end listing. Yeah, which is the stuff that's seen on the catalog. The service definition, which is you know quite often overlooked by, a, I'd say, 75% of the people that list on the digital marketplace. I mean, first of all, it used to be optional. It was mandatory, then made optional, and now it's been made mandatory again. The service definition, in effect, is a technical brochure that buyers use to evaluate offline the things that you're doing. It talks about how your service um, can be bought, how it operates, any special terms and conditions that you need to put in there and things like that, um, including um, service credits, uh, you know, your hours of service, where the data is stored, how you onboard and offboard, what happens with data, all these sort of things. And it's, it's actually really quite important. Uh, a lot of people just put um, um, uh, a marketing slide deck up there, which you know can mean that you could be quite uh, quite happily be overlooked um, by a buyer because they haven't got the right level of information and they're quite quite, quite within their rights to do that. You then have the pricing document, which, you know, please don't ever put price on application in because that means you're non-compliant. CCS do run some checks on this, but they don't really check. What they're looking for from a compliance perspective is they're looking for co-location, for recruitment, uh, and for things containing hardware. Okay, that's the main things that they're, and, and bespoke software development. Okay, so we'll look at your pricing, and we need to make sure that your pricing is quite transparent and open, and, and I, as a buyer, can reasonably easily work out how much my, my solution that you're offering, the solution that I'm looking for will cost me. Now, if I know that I'm going to need some buying professional services, I can then look at your rate card and work out and, and evaluate you against other um, organizations to see your rate card and how you stack up on rates there. Okay, and then finally, we go through your terms and conditions to make sure that one, they're compliant with the framework terms, um, especially that you're not trying to ameliorate the 30 day, um, 30 day termination for convenience clause in that which a lot of suppliers seem to think they want they want to do and be able to and make sure that you know that we're not going to get into um, too many ongoing discussions about your terms versus the terms that you know um, G Cloud and um, CSS have put in the framework. So lot four lot four does work differently it won't sit like lots one to three it will stand alone from a different catalogue and a different way of uh, it's going to go through um, I think what's called the contract to service um, uh, new portal that CCS are going to be putting up where buyers have to register through the public procurement gateway. And it works on a further competition basis, not catalog style um, like the current digital marketplace does. So on the further competition stuff, that will mean that a buyer will need to re register, issue a statement requirements, and those lucky enough to be included in the lots when they're on the services around lot, lot three will be able to respond to those competitions. Okay. And, uh, and suppliers in the lots will have to bid if they feel they qualify for the service and can actually um, can, can actually offer services. So we're going to go for a quick poll again, please, Danny. I hope that's been informative so far.
So we're going to say, how has GCAR been for you so far? If you could kindly select one of the following. We regularly win business. Uh, we've had a bit of luck, but expect more. We've only gained one contract so far, or we've had no luck whatsoever. Uh, if you please carry on and have a look at that, that'd be great. Okay, about halfway there at the moment, if you could kindly. All, all, by the way, all of this um, info, we don't share who has um, said what on this, it's all confidential. Uh, and so none of this is shared. So please do feel free to um, put, put an honest answer on there. And it looks like we're getting quite a bit of honest answer on there as well. So that's great. Would encourage more of you to, um, to vote, please, if you can. Okay, we're done a minute on there. So we've got, um, if you want to close that, Danny, that's that. So we had um, only 60% of you vote on that, so people are keeping the cloud guard. So we've got 10% of you um, regularly win business, 30% of you, we've had a bit of luck, but expected more. 8% have only gained one contract so far, and 50, over half of you have had no luck whatsoever. So hopefully this, this webinar will be helping you um, with that. So if you want to close that down, and uh, we'll crack on with a bit more information sharing. Thank you, Danny, for the way. So what suppliers need to know once it goes live? So what the buyers need to do once it goes live with the day to day. So GCAL 13, after some delays, as we now know, is due to go live on the 9th of November 22. Well, it's due to go live at the beginning of this month, uh, but now it's been put back two months due to some issues with the, plat the new platform they're developing. Um, so and that means that G12 has been extended to the 27th of November. Um, so why the delay? I said they're CCS are uh, developing a new digital service platform, both for um, Outcome 6, G13, digital specialists and programs. I'm not sure whether that will include big data analytics, but they're trying to make it so they can put as many as their frameworks in that as possible. Um, they needed more user testing. Apparently, it wasn't working quite as well as they wanted to. And they want to make sure it's easier to use for buyers and suppliers. We've not even been invited to um, do any supplier user testing. I actually don't know of any suppliers that have. So if you're a supplier that has um, been involved in user testing, please do get in touch because we're interested to find out a little bit more about what you think of it. Um, we've heard some stuff in the rumour rumor mill, which were unpleasant, um, to say the least, but uh, you know these are just rumours, and we're not going to be flowing those around until we actually have some things confirmed. Um, but yeah, uh, we'd be really interested to know from anyone who's heard and has been involved from suppliers, been involved in user testing, or even a buyer, actually. So what do suppliers need to do once it goes live? So please make sure you're not making these familiar mistakes with your listing, all right? And this is stuff that once it goes live, you can actually change as well. So have a service summary that's too short. Your service summary uh, gives you 50 words to use. So if you're using only 10 to 15 of them to describe the thing you're offering, please do make sure that you're trying to make sure and describe accurately what you're doing. This really does help buyers to assess whether you're offering the right thing and without having to go down into more detail. Um, Please don't use branded terms for your tech that buyers couldn't possibly search for and not actually compliant for. So if I wanted to search for a, um, a particular brand of tech, I have to make sure as a buyer that I've done some assessment that that brand of tech is the right thing for me. Okay. Um, so, you know, I have to be a little bit more circumspect. Circum I can't just go and search for um, AWS Compute unless I've done some consulting with someone who says that AWS is the best thing. Um, that meets my need and can prove that, especially if it's an above threshold procurement. Um, please don't use language that's either too technical or too salesy. Yeah, um, you know, so it's not a sales brochure. Uh, you know, people need to be able to assess what you've got on there, but also you think that you know, not every person you're going to have is if you're going to be assessing this is going to be a, um, a, a a cloud expert or a technical expert. Um, Please don't refer to links through the listing that don't work when it's on digital marketplace. That's a common mistake. Uh, and, you know, all the information should be kept onto the digital marketplace, please, where you can. Upload confusing or unclear pricing. Um, you know, we see this quite a lot. People come in and say, you know, that they, they'd be low because they, their buyer said, we couldn't work out quite how to price your stuff. Um, or using price on application or, you know, some, some other forms where you need to get in touch. So. Um, you know, be, be really careful about this, the way that you priced your stuff. 
And again, using too much marketing language in your in your descriptions, just explain what it does clearly. Um, there's no need to talk about, you know, the, the say we do talk about the sales, the other marketing stuff about, you know, it's the greatest thing on greatest piece of thin sliced bread. Uh, you know, we'll make the assessment as to whether we think that or not. Okay. Um, please do check over your listing, make sure it's viable. Um, have what we call a cunning plan to actually exploit G Cloud. So, you know, there are over 5,000 suppliers on G12, 38,000 services. Um, don't expect it to be uh, um, a, uh, a source of inbound leads. We'll talk about that at the bottom there. But, you know, there's um, you do need to get in touch with people and find ways of putting your services out there. Um, either it's why work from analog, getting on the phones and talking to people, which sometimes particularly works, but getting out to networking events, getting out to... Um, to other events and to maybe go to Tech UK to some of their events as well. It is it, it's very useful, but also using um, digital platforms, so inbound and outbound marketing, things like that is useful too. You do need to understand how your lot works, especially important with lot four. Um, and yeah, you can actually check out your competitors. You currently can check out your competitors on the framework. So the framework is open for, for everyone to, to see who's on there doing what. Um, we, we find, I don't know if you realize that, when you're successful on GCO and you've made sales, you have to do a report called your MI report to Crown Commercial Services. He will charge you a levy, 0.75% of that month spend um, that you've reported. Uh, out of that, they publish um, sales data every month. Um, they, we have, it used to be in the form of a CSV. Um, so we used, we took that and made a, um, a dashboard out of that. We weren't the first, but we certainly weren't the last. And CCS have their own one as well. So if you look at our website, the spend data really does work um, to see who's buying what from whom, yeah, and when. So, yeah, we strongly recommend you take a look at that. Um, I find it extremely useful tool myself. Uh, make sure your service definition is up to scratch and don't hang about. I'll take for inbound sales. You know, I still get people calling me and saying, gee, clouds a load of rubbish. We've been on it seven years and we've never had a lead once. And um, well, one, need to look at your listing for a start. But two, um, that's just not how it works. Okay, you need to get out there and do some work yourselves. So, uh, you know, the biggest top tip I can probably say is that, you know, it's not a source of inbound leads. Okay, we're back for another poll. Do you feel that your G12 or upcoming G13 listing is high quality? Yes, it's the best it can be. We come up good in searches, but also alongside our competitors. It needs some tweaking to be more viable, or it needs a lot of work. Give it another 15 to 20 seconds to get there. We've got about 70% of the people who voted so far. Keep them coming, please. Okay, that's what moved on. So, Dan, if we close that poll down, we've had 67% of you have voted. That's great. And we'll publish the results. So, what have we got here? So, 14%. Good for you, it's the best it can be. 40% uh, say we come up good in searches, but alongside our competitors. 34% think it's tweaking to be more viable, and then 14% suggest it needs a lot of work. So that's a good mix actually then. So, you know, at least people are being honest that there, there's some work that they need to do for their stuff. And hopefully, as I say, this webinar will help you um, make some tweaks that you need to do. So if we can close that down, we'll crack on. So, We've got past the information stage right now, so now we're going to pass you on some top tips as to how to be successful on G Cloud and, and um, some of the things that we've known from um, being buyers on the framework over the years. And we've seen most of the most successful people we've, uh, we, we've worked with. We've bought from all of the successful um, organizations, but also we've helped a large number of um, organizations be successful on this framework. So I think the top tips, we call it a buyability review of your listing, okay? But you can do this yourself if you need to. Um, but this is something we trademark because this is something we, we focus on quite a lot. So, um, you know, if you want to take an experience of yours, take a look. We can help. But if you want to, you know, search for your list, understand how the buying process works. Search for your listings and pretend you're the buyer. 
How are they going to find you? Have you got that health check? Is everything in the right place? Is your service definition doing the right thing? Is your pricing clear? Are your search terms working? Are you using the right filters? We had one organization came to us for this uh, Bible interview a couple of years ago, actually, uh, two Christmases ago. Uh, and they're lovely people. Um, we, we've known them for years. Uh, they said, Look, these things aren't working for us. And so we did a check them. We found that they had actually ticked a bunch of no's in their stuff, which meant they would, <coughs> while they would come up in filter, come up in general search, the minute anyone used a filter, <coughs> they filtered themselves out. Um, so, uh, you know, we, we quickly identified that. But there are other things as well. So, again, attend events, you know, engage with buyers, sign up to organisations like Tech UK and keep an eye out for CCS webinars, use social social media. Thank God now the pandemic seems to be um, um, coming back and, and face-to-face events are coming back. You know, there's the healthcare one, I think, is next week. So, um, or it might even be this week. Uh, that's a big event. I think it's actually next week. So there's some really large events are coming back. We've got GovTech coming back as well. Um, so, you know, get, get out there, get networking, get meeting people, not just to try and find buyers, but also talk to other suppliers that, are, that potentially could be partners who could help you get into um, into areas or partner up with you using being complimentary. There's a really great, there's a really great buzz around the G Cloud community, supply community. Uh, and a lot of that was centered through the, through a lot of the Tech UK networking events they used to do, but there's still some great buzz there. People still want to help each other, okay? So please ensure your sales teams, your marketing teams, customer service teams know how this works. So anyone's having touching points with customers should know if they um, how G Cloud works. So they can help them through that process. Should they? Um, should they so you, you'll often find people say, "How does this thing work?" You know, or they know they've got a buying requirement coming up and said, "Oh, we, you know, we, we know we need to do this work, but we're thinking about putting it off because we've got to go to tender." And you can tell them, "Well, actually, no. If you use G Cloud, you can get this done in a matter of weeks." Um, Check your competitors there through G Cloud. As I say, make sure you're using the send data that's on the website that we have or through CCS. Um, have a think about what your chosen markets are buying through G Cloud as well. Try to build relationship with your tech with potential buyers. And again, let them know that we can be cured through G Cloud and uh, think about your procurement, think about your pre-procurement plans as well. How are you going to get up there and think helping them um, identify the potential suppliers they can use, obviously yourself. Um, here's something we're asked for all the time is what frameworks are coming up. So we put down the best possible framework portfolio that we can think of at the moment. There's two crowd commercial services, ones that are open at the moment, which are vertical application solutions and mobile voice and data services. Um, there is an NHS shared business services, multidisciplinary consultancy due for soon. I mean, it's been soon since April. Um, they seem to have some challenges. I'm not quite sure what it's going on about, but that is due hopefully out in the next couple of weeks. A very big one coming out is Network Services 3. Um, that's due at the beginning of October. Now, with all of the recent stuff, the sad news around the Queen, etc., um, you know, things have been put back a little bit. So that was due to be out in the first week in October, we were expecting that to be delayed. Cloud uh, Digital Legacy and Application Services, that, again, is a two-stage process being run by HMRC. Um, it's sort of a cross-hybrid between Digital Outcomes and Tech Services 3. Um, very, very interesting framework. Um, and yeah, that's due out in October as well, but that again is likely to be put back a week. Um, Cloud Compute 2, which has been put back in July, is now January. You've got Transport Technology and Associated Services, very, very good for anyone looking in the transport sector that has some innovative technology, especially around IoT um, and things like that. That's a very good one to be looking at. <clears throat> a new AI and automation framework due out in January. Hugely popular, very, very, um, seems to be the um, the thing of the moment, um, along with data as well. Uh, then we've got the <coughs> relaunching of technology products, and so, excuse me, technology products and associated services. This is for the, the box product, for the tin and, and, and licensable software and a range of services around that. Again, for very, very well aimed at resellers there and service integrators. And then finally, that's in February. And finally, audio, visual, technical consultancy and commissioning. Um, again, very, very helpful for anyone in that field around May 23 next year. There will always be more coming up. Um, and, you know, we, we have a, um, you can sign up to our framework alert uh, on our website and we'll keep you posted as to these. But this is, you know, giving you an idea of what's coming up soon so you can try to build and plan your, um, your workload. So moving into the final stages now, um, and say, so, you know, we talk about some areas where we can help. So our services are, you know, we offer workshops and training. 
That's in terms of workshops on how G Cloud works. We can train your staff on how G Cloud works on DOS. Um, we do much more detailed um, on that. And certainly we do a huge amount of things on social value and bidding when you're actually required to bid and respond to stuff. Um, we're very good at framework applications. I've discussed that over 30 frameworks to date. We've been extremely successful on. <clears throat> um, we do go-to-market assessments. So if you're thinking either do we enter into the public sector or we want to grow into other sectors, uh, you know, as, as I mentioned, we've got some extremely good um, former chief officers who can and and ourselves who can walk through either what your current go-to-market um, um, plans are and advise on those and tell you um, how we think we can improve them or actually help you walk through uh, into a new go-to-market plan. So you're talking, you're working in local government, you want to work into health. Um, we have an excellent service called Procurement Plus. This is basically a phone a friend um, procurement service. So you don't have to become procurement experts. You rely on us to be that. And um, it's extremely well designed. It's got a great content. And we've got some people that have been on this for a long time. We offer a huge amount of services, including access to a, um, a tender portal via Stottles. Um, so you can see when live tenders or think contracts that you're interested can come up <clears throat> and that's free as part of that plus you get access to our advisors and our procurement specialists and you know um, there's some training courses webinars content there's quite a lot of stuff there you, you've seen what we're doing here and what's on our website where we provide an awful lot more content um, to our paying customers and bid reviews i mentioned that in terms of the workshops and training but also you know, a large percentage of our business now is actually going through as procurement people. We're really great uh, at doing red team reviews and, and, and actually making sure that, you know, you're, you're answering the questions and providing you really good scores and helping you improve your scoring. And we have done a huge amounts of work around social value in the past 18 months. Uh, and some of our clients are, you know, social value now has to have um, a minimum 10 percent in any tender for central government. So if you're getting that right, that's an equivalent of a 10 metre head start in a 100 metre sprint. And uh, thanks to my, our partner, Social Value Business, for that particular anecdote, which I think is really great. So again, Procurement Plus gives you access to features that you enable access to our procurement specialists so you can discuss your public strategy, offer your potential customers guidance too. We keep your sales and marketing teams in the know when it comes to trends in news via our content, newsletters, webinars. We grow your internal capability and knowledge within your teams. You can make sure you're ahead of the game when it comes to key frameworks and opportunities. And uh, I think the most important thing is we can help navigate complex procurement process and understanding rules and regulations, including social value requirements. So, you know, if a buyer says something to you and you're not sure what they're talking about, you just got to call us and we can help explain that. So really, I mean, you know, we, we, we've called this a different service over the years. But there's some customers that have been with us um, since what since version six really so we, we went live with our work and uh, they've been using this and they, and they have grown exponentially in the public sector by using the service so they're the two two um, levels that you have silver and gold um, we also offer viability reviews which we talked about before which is a health check assessment of your of your listing are you opting in the space you've got here we make sure we check you in searches make sure you're appearing in searches that buyer would perform we check through your supplementary documents, are your pricing documents clear and easy to buy from? How's your service definition? Is it compliant? Um, is it providing the right level of information? Um, we can say, again, are your listing presented in a way that will gain maximum advantage of your services and don't throw where your competitor has the edge? What can we do? And so do a competitor analysis and be uh, able to get an advantage of you and your competitors on cheaper. So final, I think we're coming into our final few polls here. Um, Danny, if you could run this one, then we get into Q&A. Okay, yep, how have you found this webinar so far? Please select one of the following and very useful, useful or not useful at all. Okay, so we've got nearly 8% of you voted. We'll give it another 10, 15 seconds. A few more, a, minute, a few more seconds, and then we'll close it down.
Okay, so let's publish that out. We've got nearly 80%. Okay, so we've got um, text to be very useful. Our 77% useful. Thank you very much for that. Apologies to the 3% of you who found it not useful at all. Um, please do get in touch and let us know why. Uh, you know, we're always looking to improve. Unless you're the two people, two or three people that usually come along and say that, then sorry you haven't found it useful again. Uh, so if we close that down, and I think we're getting to Q&A. Please, Danny. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, we've got some good questions coming through uh, already. Um, as Chris said at the beginning, any questions that you check in now um, and we don't get around to answering, we will type up and send around. So do um, put any questions in, a, in the questions box that you might have. Um, one of the first questions that came through uh, asked, can our sales team point people to the G Cloud just to place the order? And can we complete the paperwork through them? Um, so you can, if you if you um, have got your search listing and it's coming through as just only you and you're using a compliance search route for that, you're welcome to send that to your buyers, up to them to evaluate that and to make sure that that's compliant and they're happy with it and that they're getting best value. Um, and then, uh, you know, if they agree that's the case and they're happy with it, then yes, by all means, um, do help complete the um, documentation for them. And, uh, but it will be, again, be up to them to do the due diligence and, that, and there's uh, certain things in documentation that, that you won't be able to complete, like the um, PO number and invoicing details and things like that. Cool. Um, someone else asks, I thought we couldn't change our listings for G Cloud 13 once submitted, so how can we improve the listing? Well, yeah, um, there are some things that you can change, and this is what comes with, you know, one of the things about knowing how the framework works. So once you go, once it goes live, um, there will be an edit function uh, when you log into your digital marketplace account or to um, the G13 um, marketplace account, and you'll be able to edit the service name the, and, the, and the, the service description and your features and benefits. You can also upload a new service description. That's the stuff you can do yourselves, okay? Now, you can also adjust your pricing in a downward way. Yeah, you can't increase your pricing unless it's agree um, unless uh, it's part of the call off contract. You can't actually agree uh, increase your G cloud listing pricing, um, and um, because you have to do that in the next round. Uh, but if you want to change anything pricing or terms and conditions wise, you need to email uh, Crown Commercial Services to ask them to do that. Great. Um... Someone asks, what should the supplier do if they see a competitor is not playing fairly? Oh, that's quite straightforward. First of all, you need to make sure that it's not just sour grapes. OK, um, but secondly, there is um, you can either talk to the G Cloud team and I suggest you do that in the first instance. So raise a complaint via the uh, info at crowdcommercial.gov.uk. I uh, think that'll take you to the help desk and that will take you to the G Cloud team. They'll come back to you. Um, and if you're then not happy, I would suggest you then go to the uh, public procurement review service, which used to be called um, uh, Mystery Buyer, Mystery Shopper, sorry, Mystery Shopper service now called the public procurement review service. And uh, and they can help you there. And if you're still unsatisfied, it's just call a lawyer. Yeah. Um, a few people asking about when they can announce being on G Cloud 13. Um, so some people say, if you're new to G Cloud 13, is it a good idea to do some social media launch of the fact that you've joined? Um, and do they have to wait till the 9th of November when it goes live? No, now the standstill period is over and your framework agreements are signed. Um, you're perfectly entitled to do some um, posts about the, you know, that, that you're on G Cloud. There are some um, caveats around that. Um, you know, so you you know there are, there are certain things you can say and certain things you can't say. Um, but one tip, if you're going to announce, I mean, there's a lot of people do this. Hey, we're really delighted to be on G Cloud 13. Um, tell us what it's for. Yeah, and it's got multiple listings. Um, you know, because otherwise you and 5,000 other suppliers are selling. Hey, we're on G Cloud 13. That's great. Um, but useful to have a note. Hey, we're on G Cloud 13 for our, for our amazing cloud migration service or for our super duper. Um, HR service, whatever it is, please try and tell us what it's for and what you're doing. 
Thanks. Um, there's some really good questions coming through. Um, someone asks, um, with G Cloud, um, as technology changes, are you able to change the products within the listings? These are, there appear to be products on G Cloud 12 which are now available, which weren't at the time of award. Um, so yes, you are. As I said, how you update your program, but it has to be related to the G Cloud listing, and you have to get Crown Commercial Services approval to do that. Okay, um, just kind of working my way through some of these. Um, are there any good in-person events for tech buyers in public procurement that you'd recommend? Um, I guess we could recommend some organisations there too um, that give an opportunity for suppliers to network. Yeah, I mean, we always recommend to One Tech UK. And if you want an introduction to them, we can certainly help facilitate that. Um, so they're, 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 most of their events they have are either for members or for free. Um, they're very, very useful, based in London. Um, there are a number of events. I mean, we have um, an events job board, uh, sorry, an events board as part of our um, Procurement Plus service. So that's something that we we update and maintain regularly and are regularly advised because, you know, I don't know what this, what, what the, who's asking the question. So if, you're, if there's ones for security, there's good ones for data. You can look at the Think Digital ones if you're interested in data or cyber. Um, so I think, think, yeah, yeah, I think digital for government. That's right. Um, they're 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 usually pretty good. There's some other government ones. It all depends on really what you're trying to do. So there's a broad church, but we keep a calendar available um, uh, for our procurement plus uh, um, customers uh, that as we try and capture as many of the events as possible and can provide advice uh, on you know whether we've, we've well we've attended or we've spoken at um, and you know whether we think they're worthwhile doing. There are some great events out there, but from from a free free ish perspective, I'd probably say start with Tech UK, especially if you're new to the sector. Thanks. Um, I did think I asked this one before. I think we did ask one similar to this, but maybe not this one. Um, the fact that the pricing on GCloud 13 is very often submitted as a range, how is the final pricing agreed with the buyer? Okay, so. The buyer should have an indication if they've done their early market engagement about the sort of things they want. Okay. Now ranges. Um, I, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm going to make an assumption here that the range is on for professional services pricing. So someone might have said their day rate ranges between 250 and 450 pounds, for example. Okay. Now one that isn't compliant. You shouldn't be doing that. Um, but two, if that is the case, um, how a buyer will will work there, certainly around professional services, is they will come to you or a number of people and say, this is what we're looking to do. Can you tell us, confirm, can, can you confirm to us that you're able to do it, you have the capacity and um, what your cost for that would be? Because, you know, for professional services, it's very difficult um, to actually do that sort of thing off the, off the shelf, should we say. Cool. Um... This one, I don't know if we're able to answer. It's quite a confusing one. Um, is it possible to refer a purchase to go through a reseller on G Cloud um, to, in order that the customer gets one invoice for the complete service? I'm, I'm going to take a guess at what this is. I'm assuming that, um, in fact, no, I'm going to leave more information on that one because it gives a bit more of a bit, bit, bit better, a, a more detailed scenario what that is. But it doesn't sound like it's possible, but I don't know. But whoever it is, um, they need to be on G Cloud. Yeah. And then their server and their, their offering on G Cloud needs to reflect that whole service. Yeah. If possible. But there are ways of doing things that, you know, um, I'm not really in a position to have talked through here without knowing more detail. Yeah, there is um, some more context probably was needed there. Um, so um, any more questions, do send them through. I know there are some that we haven't answered in kind of the order. Um, it might be because we need to go back and answer those with a bit of a written response as um, it needs to be a bit more thought to the answer. Um, but someone asks, when we were looking at the uh, pipeline of frameworks coming out and we put the dates on there when they're arriving, does this mean that they've missed the boat and that's when they go live or, or is this the timeline for uh, applying for these frameworks? That's the timeline for applying. 
So it should be that's when we put the date in there, that should be the open month, when the month when they're due to open for applications. Usually then there's a um a 30 day window, 30 to 35 day window to apply. Um in the case of Dallas, it's going to be most of these are what's called an open procurement, which means there's a single um uh, response is needed, but the Dallas for is going to follow restricted, so that will follow a two-stage process where you answer what used to be called a PQQ and it's now called an SQ a supply qualification document rather than a pre-qualification document and then once we have the they have the, the limited number of suppliers they wish to take through for ITT that's when that will be issued in February. I haven't seen a restricted procurement for years so it's a bit old school to say the least. Nice. Um, so let's ask this one and we may be able to answer this one. Um, we understand that we need to gain approvals for marketing communications through our category manager. How do we find out their contact details? Um, uh, if that's about the call off, um, when you run a call off contract, then you'll have to find that out through whoever your um, comms person is within the department or authority you're using. If you're talking about for G Cloud, um, I mean, as far as I'm aware, uh, you know, you can email info at crowncommercial.gov.uk or they usually within the um, award letter will give you some guidance on what you can and can't do around um, uh, case studies and things like that. Alternatively, I know that we, we have um, a lot of guidance from our experience that we offer for our Procurement Plus, uh, Plus organisation. So give us a shout about for more information on that. Certainly around how to... Um, Right, good case studies and get them approved. Nice. Um, okay, um, probably have one more. Um, so it's a good way to cap off and uh, kind of recap on what we were talking about here, actually, um, to finish off the session. Um, do you have any uh, off the top of your head tips for optimizing being a single output for supplier searches? I'm sorry, Danny, could you say that again? Um, do you have any uh, quick tips for optimising being one of the single results on one of the buyer searches? Um, well, I think you've got to put your put. Your, I think the biggest tip is put yourself in the mind of the buyer. Yeah, about how they're going to be looking for and what they're looking to be looking for. Um, and work it and work it back through that way. Yeah, knowing the buying process is really really helpful. Um, and knowing how the framework works, and um, you yeah, know that's probably that's what I mean. I've got I've done videos and done calls on you know the, the, the top things that I think to be successful in G Cloud that you need. And one is obviously a first class G Cloud listing. Two is a decent understanding of the framework um, and how it works. It's probably what we've seen most successful suppliers do. We have um, three is a sales plan. Have an idea about the sort of sales you're going to be expecting and how you're going to get there. Then a decent marketing plan to help sort that out to get the stuff in the funnel. Um, so that's four. Five is um, a really, really good understanding of your security and um, how it applies to government security, class security levels. And six now is obviously a really good knowledge of social value and how that applies to your service as well and what you can bring to the table. So in terms of um, the answering that question, you really do need to put your mind into the mind of the buyer, understand the buying process um, and practice trying to buy your um, service. Brilliant. Um, that's, yeah, that's um, all the questions um, that okay. we have time to answer. So um, we'll, as I said, any not answered, don't worry, we'll write up the answer and send around with the recording either later this afternoon or tomorrow morning. Brilliant. OK, well, thank you very much, Danny, for that. That's really helpful. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad for the level of questions we've had. There's some really good ones. Um, I hope you've all found this useful. Um, in fact, I know 97% um, of you have found it useful. So thank you very much for your time. Just finally, um, it'd be really, really great if you could follow us on, on social, if that's your thing, especially LinkedIn. LinkedIn really does help us um, improve our ratings and can help us as a business as well. So we're a small business, we're looking to grow and we like and we publish an awful lot of our content through LinkedIn. So um, it, 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 it is coming up to Twitter, but we tend to find LinkedIn is a much more better platform for us. So if you want to find out more about that, that stuff that we're up to, please do, um, uh, follow us on social but again if you want to get in touch with us our contact details are below and uh, i look forward to seeing you again and, and wish you the very very best for when g cloud goes live and, and selling onto the digital marketplace with that i'm gonna leave now and thank you very much